Hey guys, welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel where we cover all things crypto and crypto mining. So today's video is going to be kind of a taboo subject almost. Going to be talking about ASIC miners and what I look for when I'm buying them. The reason I say it's kind of a weird subject is because nobody really talks about it. Nobody really talks about where they're buying them from, what they're looking at. Um, we all see those things on like, you know, reddits and forums about people buying them from, you know, telegram channels, things like that. Going to talk about the risky aspects, like why that's probably not the best idea um, and what I look for when I'm purchasing them and a place I've purchased from before. Um, so again, none of this is financial advice. I have zero affiliation with any of the, the companies or anything I'm going to mention in this video. It's just what I look for and who I've purchased from in the past. All right, so we're going to start with a good resource for learning about different ASIC miners, and that's ASICminerValue.com. Um, so the reason it's such a good source has a very good list of all the current miners, right? Um, and it gives you a lot of info on them. The main thing being the profitability, right? This is the one of the main things you're going to be looking at. Because it's not going to make any sense to be coming down here and looking at something that's going to give you a negative $1.40 a day yield, right? Um, so it's a good uh, way to research what you potentially might be looking at. Um, so here are the different miners and then what algo it's mining. Um, so that way you can look into that project and get a, get a good idea if it's going to be worth it to actually mine it, Right. Things you want to look for when you're mining it, if it's a, something you're kind of unfamiliar with, is just look at the tokenomics of that coin. Is it a good coin? Is it a good project? Are they going to be around? When are the, is there a halving happening soon, um, which is going to affect your yield? Um, and you have to take that into account when you're looking at the profitability. Um, so definitely do your research when you're going at a coin. Don't just pick the number one. Be like, okay, I'm going all in on that one when they might be having a halving in like four months and not maybe not have any like price appreciation from it, but you're getting half the yields of what you're getting today. Um, so you definitely want to do your research, pick something that you actually like, like go into it, learn about it, get in that discord, get in that Reddit, learn about that project, you know, get comfortable with it. Um, so when you click on any of these miners, we'll do the K3 just for example. Um, it gives you a good breakdown of how much you would yield per day, what the electricity cost would be. Um, you're going to want to input your current rate. This one's defaulted at 12, so you can put in your default, and that way you can see what the what you would actually be yielding. Um, another resource they do have is to look at vendors. They have a list of vendors at the bottom. Doesn't mean they're the greatest, doesn't mean they're the best, but it does give you some of the bigger vendors in the space. Um, so that way you can kind of research, you can kind of like go into each individual site, try to look up reviews, see what you think of them, see what payment methods they take. Um, cause that's one big thing, right? So me personally, what I look for when I'm purchasing is that they take credit cards. I'm not going to take the risk of paying in crypto. I know a lot of people do, and that is the main way to get the miner, especially if you're going to purchase from like the manufacturer that's going to be pretty much the only way. It's usually either crypto or like a bank transfer. Me personally, too much risk. Like I would rather not. I'd rather pay a little bit extra, get it through a third party, go that route. Um, just because you do have that peace of mind that it's through a credit card. You do have a refund process. You have a chargeback process. You have fraud protection. You're covered in those cases, right? you're buying from the manufacturer, typically you're going to be okay, right? But this mainly pertains more to like these people who are like buying directly on like forum boards from some random guy on Telegram. Um, it's crazy to me that so many people do this. It's like the easiest scam in the world to like, oh, hey, yep, yep, send me the crypto. This is my address. And with crypto, you remember, it's permanent. There is no way around it. It's once it's sent, it's done. It's in that wallet. It's a wrap. This person can ghost you. You don't know. But again, if you are purchasing directly from the manufacturer, you're probably going to be okay. And that is actually a good method to buy because when you buy directly from the manufacturer, at least that way, you're going to get the best price. And then you're also going to be able to take advantage of that warranty process. Um, but for me personally, 
I've mainly purchased through third party vendors that use credit cards again for that price protection. Um, cause one big thing that was happening, it's happened. I, I saw it happen a lot with the helium market, right? Especially for the people paying with crypto that weren't using like a stable coin that were using like ETH as payment or BTC as payment is that because the price is so volatile, right? Let's say at the time you bought a miner that was $8,000. So at the time, let's say you purchased it a while back and ETH was at 4,000, right? So your payment was two ETH, right? Which was a $8,000 equivalent. Let's say five months later, your order gets canceled. Okay, we weren't able to fulfill it. We're canceling your order. We're going to refund you. So six months later, what was a $8,000 USD value for those two ETH, now let's say ETH is at 1600 bucks. Now it only has a $3,200 USD value, but your refund was those two ETH again. So yes, it's two ETH that's getting refunded, but that USD value is a huge difference. And that did happen to a lot of people, unfortunately, who pre-ordered miners in the past. So that is kind of like, not necessarily a scam. I mean, it kind of is. It's just a way to like deceive you. So if you are going to pay with crypto, make sure you're using a stable coin. Make sure you're using USDT, USDC. One of those because it's going to be stable. At least you have that going for you just in case it were to get delayed. You know, delays can happen even though, let's say they have a ship date of three weeks. Something can happen. It gets delayed, delayed, delayed. Something you can't really control, it can happen. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, but again, if you are using crypto, uh, the only way I would use that is if I'm buying directly from either like Bitmain or Gold Shell, something like that. I'm not going to be doing that with any of these other vendors. Regardless of how good the reviews are, you don't know, especially if it's out of the country. They can just freaking go out of business that very next day after they took all this pre-order money. You just really do not know. So again, a lot of risk there. So that's something you can do, but me personally, not something I would do. Um, so you can check out like the Gold Shell site, like Gold Shell, for example, they do take crypto, which is their main form of payment. And again, with them, you can use ETH, USDC. Like, I don't know how their refund process is. I would assume that they're going to be good guys and give you your actual USD equivalent if you do get a refund for something that's pre-ordered well in advance. Um, but again, I'm not familiar with them, never ordered directly through them. So I don't know what their process is with that. Um, here's Bitmain site. So with Bitmain, I believe you have to KYC when you make an account with them. So that's something that sometimes may deter people. Um, and then also they're notorious for something that's hot for having like an order quantity. Like a lot of times you can't just order one. It's like bulk orders only. Um, it just depends on what you're buying. And what's available at the time, right? Their stock goes in and out a lot. So that's their thing. I've never purchased directly from them either. Um, one other vendor place that you can buy from is kind of a weird one. Actually, Amazon, right? Um, the main reason I would consider them, they're typically going to be a little bit higher. But again, you do have some kind of like recourse for like a refund. Some kind of warranty that you're actually going to get your miner. Um but again, scams galore on here as well. Typically, you're going to get your money back fairly easily if it is a scam. You want to go through just like an eBay auction. You want to go through, look at the, the vendors, see what names come up. Like Viparatech is one. It's a store. They've been around. So this would probably be the one to choose from here. Also, Kyotech, I know they've been around. They're a big like other vendor. Um, but one big advantage you do have with Amazon is if you have their chase card they frequently do promos like zero percent promos for 24 months if you were to finance it so that is an option totally up to you not financial advice anything like that but there are options there for that um, another vendor another place to get from is ebay right especially for used miners because again at least on upon the initial delivery you have some kind of warranty that you're going to get a functioning miner you have the 30 days or whatever to plug it in verify that it works and go from there. So at least you're going to get some kind of a working product. Um, they also do typically will have deals with uh, PayPal for like some kind of like financing deal sometimes. Forget the name of it. It's not on here because I have it logged out or whatever. But it's typically like a 24 month 0% or 3.99% kind of financing things if that's something you're looking at also. 
Um, let's see, what else? My personal one, again, no affiliation, no link, no spawn, nothing like that. This is just one I've personally used that I've had good success with as far as the vendors go as BT Miners. Um, again, the main reason for them is the fact that you can use a credit card. You at least have that form of protection. Um, they are one of the bigger companies. Did a lot of research into them before I purchased, saw that they were at some of like, you know, the mining conferences, like I think they were at Bitcoin Miami. Um, they are active in the scene. They were sponsoring a couple channels. I think they're a sponsor on on uh, Voscoin's uh, forum board, Voscoin Talk or Voss Talk, whatever it is. But um, so they've been around. I've personally ordered through them. No issues at all whatsoever. Painless process. Um and again, they take credit cards, that being the big thing for me, right? Their prices were pretty good. They were pretty comparable to anybody else, and they took credit cards, right? So that's one big thing. Again, no affiliation, not shilling them, nothing like that. This is just one that I've used, and specifically for that reason. Um, so some things to consider if you're going to be purchasing one are that the price of the miner is going to be directly correlated with the value of that coin at the time, right? So these can be very volatile. They can jump at any given time. A good example right now are with the, because uh, of that doge pump we just got. So these L7s have gone up a good amount because of that. So number one, they sold out, right? Number two, they did go up a little bit. Not a whole lot, but the main thing is availability. They did sell out because of that pump, and just depending on that price, it'll go up, right? But also, on the flip side, if it tanks, the prices typically will go down, just like the case with BTC right now. The Bitcoin miners are fairly cheap right now, and potentially may be as low as they go, but again, it's fully dependent on the price action of the coin, right? So if you're in the camp that believes that we're already bottomed and we're going to stay like this, then this may be one of the best prices for them. But if you do think that, no, nope, bottom's not in yet, we're still going to go lower, then the prices are going to go lower. So that's something you're going to want to take into consideration if you're buying um, any ASIC for any project is the value of the coin. So like, for example, with Kadena, what we were looking at earlier, if the price were to go back up to like all-time highs, let's say in a year, the price is going to go through the roof. Specifically, this one had already did go kind of through the roof. These were initially, I think they were 5300 from Bitmain. Most of the third-party sellers were in this range between six to 7000 They were up for a few days until what really hyped it up was when it went live on Bitmain's site and it sold out in like a minute or whatever. Then the resale went up because they saw the demand was going to be there. So the initial resale was this price, but because of the demand there, Everybody now went up to these prices. So now you could see everything the cheapest reseller for a different pre order is over 10K, right? So again, it's all based on hype, right? And we saw the same thing with the gold shell miners, especially those KD boxes. Not the KD boxes, like the KD6. At one point, they were like 60 grand just based off of the token value. And now they're a fraction of that. They're down to what, like three, four grand or whatever it is now? I don't even want to look. It's going to be disappointing. <laughs> But they've gone down so much. Yeah, like the KD Max is 4800 So again, it's really based on hype, speculation, and the value of the coin itself. Um, some other things to factor in are is if you're ordering it directly from the manufacturer or ordering it from overseas, is the potential for a customs tax and duty hit, right? Which I believe it's about like 25%. So just be aware that if it's coming from over there, there's a potential to get that, to get that uh, tax put on you. Um, most of the manufacturers are pretty good. Like I know Gold Shell for the longest was like just defaulting it, putting the value, declaring the value at like 800 bucks or whatever, so it wouldn't meet the threshold. So there was no real tax there. But now I believe they made it where you have to input that value, right? So you have to set the declared value of what it is. So if you actually put what it is, you're going to get taxed that that amount, that 25% on top of the purchase price, top of the shipping price. So that is something to take, in, uh, take into account, especially if you, for these more expensive miners. Like I just ordered a KA3, I pre-ordered one. 
there's a possibility I may get hit with that tax. I mean, for me personally, it's still going to be worth it because of the cost, whatever, but just be aware that there is a possibility for that. Um, another big risk to take into account is if you're ordering from these smaller companies. If you're ordering a miner from like Gold Shell, Ivy Link, um, any of these other smaller manufacturers, it's just the chance of them getting like overran by Bitmain. Right, so the example I'm giving is like um, right now what's happening with with Kadena, right? These KD lights, these KD sixes, these KD maxes, they're all gonna essentially be worthless after this KA three comes out because it's just so much more advanced, so much more efficient. Um, Bitmain has those resources to be able to do that, right? They're in either the engineering, their R and D department, whatever it is, they're just so much more advanced that it can just wipe out the potential earnings of another coin. Um, so you got to be really careful with that if it's an algo that they're eyeing. Like the next one that's going to get hit is uh, the Nervos network. So any of those CKB miners, these little CK boxes and the CK6, they're going to be not worth much depending on how efficient that new Bitmain uh, machine is going to be, which the stats still haven't came out, but I have a funny feeling it's going to blow it out of the park just like the other ones did, just like the just like the L7 did with the uh, LT6 and the little mini Doge miners. Um, so that is something to take into account as well. Um, and just in general, guys, you know, crypto mining, especially ASIC mining. Because remember, with ASICs, you're down to that specific coin. That's all it's going to be able to mine. So if something like that happens, you're stuck with it. It's not like with GPUs where you can, okay, this algo sucks. I'm going to switch to another project. I'm going to switch to something else. No, not with ASICs. With ASICs, that is it. The exception being there's a handful of miners that can mine other algos. I think uh, technically like Dogecoin, for example, it, it merge mines. It's Doge and Litecoin. Um, the only other big one is like um, some of these uh, handshake miners also do SIA coin. Some of them you're actually able to mine either algo, not at the same time but you can make it do one or the other depending on profitability. So that is something that is kind of cool, but it's very limited, right? Those are literally the only two examples I've seen. There may be others, but those are the only two I've come across. Um, so again, just keep in mind, guys, it's volatile. Um, there are going to be good prices coming, especially with the holidays coming, Black Friday's coming. I'm sure a lot of these websites are going to have good deals. Um, so these are things to take into account. Right. But the main thing being is where you think we are in the timeline. Again, if you think we bottomed out, these may be some of the best prices you've seen. If you think we're still going lower sometime next year, then that may be the time. Um, me personally, I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to see what goes on sale and maybe go from there. We'll see. We'll see if there's any good deals that entice me. <laughs> we'll see. Um, all right, guys. Well, hopefully you learned something. You got something from this video. Please comment, like, subscribe, um, especially this video, guys. Comment in the in the comment section, you know, if you've purchased any ASICs, if you have any experience with any of these other vendors, let's, like, put it on the open. It's been such a big thing where people are all hush-hush and, oh, I have my connect and all this stuff about where they got their ASICs from. Let's put it out there. Let's be a community. Let's help each other out. Let's put reviews out there. Um, so, again, guys, please comment, like it, subscribe and keep stacking guys all right thanks for watching and i'm out